Yup, that's right boys, we're talking about fuel today. What is up guys, today we are talking about how to make more power with auxiliary fueling or 8th port injection. Now as you guys probably know, the stock fuel injectors on the Mazda Speed 3 and 6 cannot be upgraded. They can only max out at about 380 wheel horsepower, maybe 400 if you're lucky, but you cannot upgrade the stock injectors. So what you have to do to make more power is add more injectors. So we're talking about 8th port and what that means is this is my new fuel rail right here. This one down here is the stock one of course. So as you guys can see there's an injector here, 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 and here. That's four extra. Then there's the stock four down there that go right into the cylinders because it's direct injection. So this is what's known as eighth port because we're adding four extra injectors, so eight total. So we're gonna be talking about how to make that work in the best setup. Now, there are a few different ways to go about installing this, but I'm talking about the easiest and most simple way, which is probably good for about 600 wheel horsepower. Depends if you run pump gas or E85. You might be able to squeeze a little bit more out if you run full E85, but I'm gonna be running pump gas, so I'm shooting for about 500 to 550. So let's get to today's video. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is install a fuel pump, which I have an Aeromotive Stealth fuel pump. I'll go over that video later on how to install that, because I haven't put it in this car yet. It's actually in my old Mazda Speed 6 that's dead right there, but Looking back at the stock fuel lines, as you guys can see, this blue clip down here, right there, that is the stock fuel line. So if you're following this guy right here, this is the stock line. I have it taped together just to show you guys, but basically this one normally clips right in here on the high pressure fuel pump. It goes on this tab and it just clips right in. So that's how like the stock system works. It clips into here and then you have this yellow one right here. I'll pull it off for you guys. So it has another clip there. So the yellow one goes right here and that one doesn't need to be changed. That one goes down to the stock fuel rail right there. It's this line and it goes right into the stock fuel rail. So what we have to do is basically we're sandwiching this new rail in between the feed line. So it comes off the firewall here. It's feeding all the way to here then it goes across and then it comes back and then this is our new line. So this guy is gonna plug right in there like that. So basically all we're doing is sandwiching this new rail in between the feed. So it just has to loop around and uh, connect and it should get plenty of fuel pressure. This is the simplest way that I saw to do it and that my tuner recommended to me and I'm pretty excited to try this way out. Now I use these uh, just generic fuel line hoses and generic like fittings because it's a lot cheaper to run these and if they ever break or burst, it's only a few dollars to replace them instead of AN lines. So I'm a huge fan of just using these basic hoses. Now what you have to do when you're clipping them onto this little nipple right here, as you can see it has this little tab part and that's for the stock like plastic clip. This blue clip just clips onto it. But what I normally do is I'll shove the hose on there as far as it'll go and then you have to put two hose clamps on it, one on the bottom and one on the top, and it's not going anywhere. I actually ran it like that for about two years, and the line never broke, nor did it uh, like start to leak or anything like that. So I'm pretty uh, happy with how the lines work out, but basically after you have this sandwich in between your feed, you're gonna need, of course, to get this fuel rail. Now I got this fuel rail with my intake manifold. This is a 16W Fabworks right there, if you guys can see it. It's 16W Fabworks. Now this manifold is not that uh, not that common. You have to like special find that one, special order or something. I got it just secondhand, but normally you get a JMF intake manifold or there's a few other intake manifolds you can choose from, but JMF is the name of the most common one and it will come with a fuel rail just like this one. Then you gotta get some injectors. Now these are 1050 CC injectors. They are the ID 1050s and that's what I was recommended to me by my tuner. But basically you guys are gonna wanna 
You're gonna wanna select your power goal before you hook up your fuel setup. Then once you have your power goal, you just connect your fuel setup to suit your needs. So since I'm trying to shoot for 500, I can run this setup, which is called a returnless setup. So as you guys can see, there is no return line. It just simply goes from the feed down and then it will butt up onto the stock rail. So if you were gonna go for more power, maybe say 700, 800, you would want what's called a return style. And that's where you have to actually add a whole nother line and put it underneath the car. It's not that hard to do, but it's just a little bit more of a pain. A lot of people, what they will do, if they run the return style, which is where you add the extra line, and that's for seven, 800 plus, uh, they'll run a secondary fuel uh, cell, like a little fuel cell, and they'll put straight E85 in the fuel cell, and then they'll run normal pump gas into their stock uh, tank. So basically what's going on, if you're confused, is the engine will run off these almost at all times, and I mean off the stock injectors, the stock uh, fuel setup. These are gonna work basically how you would think nitrous would work or methanol injection or some other setup. They're basically only gonna spray at higher RPMs or when uh, it's needed you know, to compensate for more boost. So these will not be running all the time and uh, it should run like pretty smooth. It should be pretty drivable because it runs just like stock. One really nice thing is that since these stock injectors are the ones that are gonna be running most of the time, these ones only fire when you get to higher RPM or higher boost, which the tuner of course takes care of all that for you. He's the one that makes sure they run properly, but they still don't come on until higher RPM and when you're in you know, full boost or so. So it gives really good drivability since it runs off the stock direct injection, which is really nice because normally when you upgrade to bigger injectors on other platforms, say Evos or Subarus, you normally will get some bad drivability uh, say when you're you know trying to just cruise or maybe even idling it might be have a rough idle or something because the injectors are so big they're just uh, too big to like pump a small amount of fuel in so it's a really good setup that the stock injectors are able to run normal and run efficiently so you can still get good gas mileage stuff like that but then you also can make big power with the auxiliary fuel rail now one other thing I wanted to touch on is this is the high pressure fuel pump. So basically what's going on is you have a, a pump that goes in the back of your car called an in-tank pump, which is actually underneath your seat. You get to pull up your seat right there. I'll show you guys in another video, but you have an in-tank pump, which is my Aeromotive Stealth pump that I talked about earlier. And then you have this thing, which is a high pressure fuel pump. So the stock or the in-tank pump is what pumps the fuel all the way around and then once it gets to this line right here it feeds into this thing which is the high pressure fuel pump and then the high pressure fuel pump will use this line the yellow one i showed you and it will you know pressurize it to like 1800 psi or something insane so it'll maintain a really really good uh, fuel pressure so you don't have to worry about this one uh, this secondary rail messing up your fuel pressure or anything like that it should work pretty easily now in order to control these things as you can see they have clips right here or something goes there oh you need this thing which is known as a split second a1 c1 additional injector controller as it says on the box that's what this thing is it's just like a little box thing that controls the injectors so basically what's going on is you have one side right here oh there we go so this one plugs in to your harness which you have to actually wire it into your harness and that's probably the hardest part now luckily I bought a wire tucked harness, which is this really nice harness right here. Uh, you can buy them off Facebook. I'll put a link in the description, but basically you buy a harness and it comes plug and play. So this piece came with it and I literally just have to plug it in. I don't have to do really any wiring, only these four wires, but it's super duper simple. So basically what goes on with this is if I can find the plugs, 
Oh, here they are down here. So these plugs, there's four of them total because I'm running eighth port, which are these, you know, extra ones right there. These plugs go right into each one and it does not matter which one they plug into because I forgot to mention uh, this auxiliary rail batch fires. Now what batch firing is, is when all four of these injectors are going to fire at the same exact time. So how I was saying earlier that it works like nitrous or like methanol injection, uh, they're just going to be spraying at the exact same time all four of them and it's just going to like, it's called batch firing and it's just basically going to spray into your intake manifold to make sure the fuel mixture is uh, right or correct. And your tuner will take care of that, like I said, but obviously you have to plug all this in and then you have to check it. So I'm gonna check these later on in a different video, probably in the video that I show you guys how to install the fuel pump. I'll probably show you how to install the split second controller, that box thing right there I was showing you. I'll show you guys how to test that and make sure it's working and everything. But basically when you get a pro tune, uh, from Purple Drank, Freak Tune, Nishan, any of the reputable Mazda tuners, they will tell you the steps you have to go through and they will be pretty helpful. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about like all these little wiring things. It's really simple, but it's just kind of once you are gonna do it, you just buy it and then you buy your tune and the tuner will help you make sure everything's installed correctly. But I'll go over an in-depth video for the split second controller. Just know it's really simple and that all you do is just plug these simply into each one of these and then you're pretty much good to go. So let's move this guy out of the way, split second controller and see if there's anything else we want to touch on. But yeah, that's pretty much the auxiliary fuel setup for eighth port. Now there's this thing called sixth port fuel injection or fifth port fuel injection. And all that is, is one single extra injector. So as you guys can see, since I have all four right there, normally you'll get one or two of them and then you'll actually put them into your uh, intercooler piping. So you'll get like a little adapter or you can make your own, I guess but normally you just buy an adapter and it'll have like two holes right here. And these injectors, they, they'll fit any style of injector like a 1000cc or 2000cc uh, injector, but they basically just go right into your intercooler piping. Now the reason why I don't like that uh, as much is that with fifth and sixth port uh, auxiliary fueling, what I was just talking about, since they are in your intercooler piping, as you could imagine, the air that's, you know, pushing through it is like pretty hot. And so since the fuel is injected right here, the fuel has to then travel through the intercooler piping into the intake manifold and then into the engine, you know, via each one of these runners is what they're called. Each one of the, you know, things that go into your engine, they're called runners, but I'm just trying to explain it so newbies could understand. But basically I don't like fifth or sixth port injection because the hot air that's going through here tends to have like a problem where it might pre-detonate or it possibly could pre-detonate the fuel. And what would happen is you just would uh, start to like break up and you might be able to blow up your engine. Now you're not gonna blow up your engine right away, but if you were pushing it and you were running a lot of boost, then it is possible you could blow up more easily with the fifth and sixth port just because of where they're located. So since they would be located here or maybe they would be located like right here before your throttle body, it's just more chance for it to go wrong and uh, more chance for uneven fueling. So I highly recommend going full eighth port fuel injection if you're gonna do a setup like this. It's not really worth it to cheap out and go for fifth or sixth port fuel injection. Now there's this thing called methanol injection and methanol injection is the exact same concept as this eighth port fuel setup, except instead of running it off pump gas or running it off the fuel that you put in your car, you have a separate fuel cell, like I said before, but the fuel cell you would then fill up with methanol. And methanol is a pretty cool way to make more power but when you try to go for anything above about 500, 600 wheel horsepower, the methanol just 
doesn't really work as well it's kind of hard to squeeze out that extra power so it's not really worth it in my opinion the methanol is just too expensive to run over time it's more of like a drag setup like if you're gonna be drag racing and trying to just do one pass at a quarter mile then methanol would be an amazing idea but if you're trying to do what i'm trying to do where you daily drive your car at a higher horsepower this is really the best setup you could possibly go for because it's going to run on pump gas so you don't have to do anything special to your fuel you don't have to mix anything you just simply put 91 pump gas into your tank and then you just turn the car on and go uh, but yeah i'm pretty excited to be running this let me know if I missed anything guys or if you're confused about anything. This is probably part one for the setup because there's a lot more I have to go through uh, probably to clear stuff up and I want to do a video on the fuel pump and maybe a few other little things if I forgot but I hope you guys like today's video. Be sure to like the video and I will catch you guys next time.